see in the life of St. Anne a great deal of courage and resignation. To the modern mind, these may seem opposed. Too often, too many think, if you are courageous, there is no need to be resigned, and if you are resigned, there is no need to be courageous. But St. Anne was both courageous and resigned in this respect. She grew old childless, a thing considered very humiliating among the Jews. According to their mindset at that time, this was seen as a fault or sin of the parent that God had not blessed the marriage with children. It took a lot of courage for St. Anne to face the looks and the whispers, but she was resigned to the God's holy will. She did not complain. She endured. She trusted. She persevered. And look at her reward. Not even just in eternity, but also in, in this life, we see her blessed. She is the mother of the mother of God. We see here two great virtues that we all need to imitate. But how did St. Anne know how to be both courageous and resigned? How can we in our everyday lives know which of these God wishes in our, for us? The love of God guided not by human res, any human element or respect, but by a loving wisdom is the most necessary in every respect of our lives. This we can easily see as the pearl of great price in the, wis, in the gospel today, the pearl of wisdom. After all, would we, what would not, we not do to attain peace? But do we know the way? In his book, De Doctrina Christiana, book 2, chapter 7, St. Augustine speaks, and he sets forth, he speaks of seven steps by which beginners in the spiritual life can attain wisdom. Step one is we must focus on God in a holy fear. And why is this? To know his will. You might say, Father, can we know God's will without fear? Perhaps. But this fear gives the necessary boost to our poor fallen nature that needs to not only know but do. It's kind of like interference, our own will, our own self-love, the Deceptions and distractions of the world interferes with our clear understanding of God's will. So we need that fear to clarify, to guide us. How do we do this? Think of death. Hell is mentioned in the gospel today. At the end of the gospel, our Lord tells us of it. It's a good remedy to sin as also a great incentive to do the will of God. Now, of course, today, fear is the most dreaded four-letter word, a word according to this proud world of, for cowards. No one should fear anything. This is of the devil. Fear not God, nor his punishments. This is a lie. The truth is, as we know by, by grace, fear of the Lord is a gift. It is not something to dread. It is not something morose. It is not something very negative that the world makes it to be. It is something both positive to keep us positive and to lead us to a positive eternity. It is the, this gift is not just any gift. It is a gift of the embodiment of the love of God, the Holy Ghost. So sadly, most of the world today most in the world see this first step to wisdom and they run the other way. Are we among them? Step two, piety must render us docile and meek. Only thus can we truly profit by Holy Scripture, he says. Here again, the world sees only folly. What would they say? Docility? If you are strong and or smart enough... You can get your own way. Why would you need to be docile and meek? You will only be taken advantage of. They cannot see the points. Poor blind souls, they fail to remember Christ's example and words. 
They fail to understand without this we are lost. God cannot work with us, but with this docility, we can be molded as God wishes. We can save our souls, and we will. But without it, we become hard of heart and resist the holy will of God, which is what? Our conversion, perseverance, and salvation. In step three, St. Augustine tells us knowledge. We must study God in his holy word. Here we learn to love God for his own sake and not ours. We learn to see the things that keep us far from God. Since the world and those of the world are so self-centered and so self-serving, this is a contradiction to self-preservation. But in reality, it is the key to it. Rather, in fact, here we must distinguish. This knowledge and living it and using it leads to the destruction of fallen nature and the preservation of our immortal soul. We must also take to heart and never forget those dreadful words, that warning in the book of Osi, chapter 4, verse 6. My people perish through ignorance. How many are lost without their electronic device in, what really ma- in matters that really count? How many other things passing are we well versed in? Do we know God, our faith? How to defend the honor of these? And so we come to the next step, fortitude. This is how we part with the pleasure-seeking world, as we must. It is here at this critical step that we learn not just the value, but really the love of eternal things. Why is this so critical? It is here the will is shaped by desires. And if the desires be for things eternal, the great battle is won. Fortitude makes this victory possible. Fortitude must be nourished by grace. It is the only true way. And so we have to use the different means of grace to do so. The fifth step is the counsel of mercy, so important to purify us from the troubles of our passions. Empathy with others. Giving mercy so as we, can, we also can receive not measuring our mercy so that our mercy from God will not be measured. Then a strengthening calm enters the soul. And this is much needed for the next step, which is love of neighbor and using that fortitude that we have acquired to do so. Now look how far we've come. And are we now just getting to love of neighbor? Do we struggle to love our neighbor? Perhaps we need to practice more of the first five steps. Yes, this includes purifying, uh, the purifying love of our enemies. It is here we are, are, all, we are so purified that for nothing will we turn from the truth, something we all need to stand fast against the foes that we face, will face, and must face. Only when and as we die to the world can we see God. And the last step now, this is the step, in this step we have reached wisdom. Here only is, in this stepwise process, can we beginners begin to find and enjoy God in peace and tranquility. St. Augustine, whose method this is, defines wisdom as knowledge and love of God. Yes, please note, this is the last step. How many seek in vain in How many of us seek in vain in our souls and in our families peace? What happens if we try to climb a mountain in one step? We find it impossible. Do we take the means necessary to secure peace and tranquility? Where are we in these first six steps? Are we lacking? Where? Let us thank God and our Blessed Mother for this wonderful instruction they have given us all through the great St. Augustine. Let us pursue this path and hold the course, no matter what the cost, seeing the benefit dwarfs any cost, no matter how great. It is indeed the pearl of great price, this loving wisdom. It is worth all costs, but so much more. Let us never forget that. Let us not forget the steps. Let us imitate the great St. Anne and her resignation and courage, and especially 
in her wisdom. She who gave birth to her who is the seat of wisdom, let us ask and trust her help in these steps, so foreign to nature and so necessary for our souls and our eternal salvation. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.